1983, it was a, a transitional year for Queensland. Um, Lou, can you tell us a little bit about there was an election that year? Just give us your thoughts on that election in 1983. Um, that was a year that uh, Terry White challenged me as leader of the Liberal Party and the election was not due till uh, 84 uh, in those days. And the moment, pretty well, that I advised the Premier that Terry White had been elected as leader, the Premier decided to have an election. Uh, <laughs> and it was, of course, gave no time for Terry to settle in to the leaders, and I had decided that I would leave Parliament as well. But the people weren't ready for that change, uh, and uh, we went from 24, 25 seats to 8. Uh, and, uh, I felt that it was going to be that we could well have become the leading party in that coalition. Um, people in my party didn't necessarily agree, uh, but the price was paid, of course, at the election which followed. Joe was starting to lose his overriding power in Cabinet at that time. But I think that um, within his own party, there was more a feeling he'd had his time. You know, he was uh, one who had gut feelings about things, not necessarily the right gut feeling, uh, but he was a very good man to work with. He was respectful to the utmost with women. If ever a lady came into his presence uh, and he was in a small room uh, with the other people, he would immediately get to his feet. Um, he had personal views that were very strong and uh, uh, he let you know in no uncertain terms without ever raising his voice. I never heard that. 1993 was the year you decided to retire. Looking around here, what sort of things run through your mind because this would not have been here? Um, I, I was asked by the Premier immediately, I replied, would I uh, uh, do two things for him? Would I go on the University of Queensland to, uh, Senate? And uh, secondly, uh, would I run this little thing, Expo, over where we didn't even have a site at that stage? And uh, uh, when I read the papers on an Expo, uh, whilst it was a national event uh, being held in Queensland, underwritten by the Queensland Government, I felt it would bring a great deal, provided three things. We could get the right people running it. Secondly, we had the right site uh, as close as possible to the inner city. And thirdly, we made sure that people would have a great time on Expo sites. It all worked out very well for us. Do you ever walk through here imagining that you had a lot to do with this? Do you? I um, uh, walk through this site very regularly. Uh, it brings back wonderful memories. I met my wife Jane here uh, and uh, uh, this site is a post expo. As a post expo redeveloped is the best in the world. This was a very rundown area and most of the people who were involved in the selection felt that this could give us an opportunity to not only have an expo close to the city, uh, good transport, uh, but also to be a lovely spot after expo. What was here? A lot, a lot of people won't know. What was actually here? There were old buildings, uh, there were uh, camps for people who had no home that used to just put up a uh, sleep all around the place. Uh, it was not really safe at times walking through. Um, there were only two buildings that we were able to leave on the site. Uh, the rest we were, were so bad that we knocked them all over. At the closing ceremony, the, the people of Brisbane gave you a standing ovation. The chairman of World Expo, the Honourable Sue Llewellyn Edward. It was a wonderful moment. It was at 10 o'clock at night when we closed and uh, just nearby here uh, we had a closing ceremony and uh, I declared Expo 88 over. Um, in fact, um, it, was, it brings tears to my eyes when I talk about it. Uh, but I can honestly say that I owe the city of Brisbane, the people of Queensland, the people of Australia a gratitude that I cannot express in words for the opportunity and the privilege uh, to bring Expo 88 to this state. Not because what I did, but what my team did for this great event in the best year in Queensland's history.